Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Uh, happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, um, Tuesday, August 29th. It's about 12.10, I believe. Uh, doing a live Q&A, a live uh, kind of a success strategy session. Uh, I was going to do it on my Facebook page. Hey, Annette, how you doing? Uh, but, oops. Uh, but I, I decided to do it here because no one was logging in. On, fa on my Facebook page, so I thought I would do it here. So feel free to invite any friends you have who might be interested in just some simple strategies um, that I employ um, and that can hopefully be of help to people who are trying to get in shape, trying to get back in shape, uh, frustrated, um, or have given up. You know, anybody who wants a little advice on on what I do, um, I'm going to devote this session uh, to doing that. So feel free to submit uh, any questions um, that you might have. And what we can do is is I'll try to answer those. I didn't have a, a um, I didn't have a format. I was going to do a live or I was going to do a video talking about some general general strategies that I use um, and still use and have learned over the years. Uh, but number one, that would be too formal and I would need to kind of sit down and, and map out exactly how I was going to talk, uh, which I hate doing. Um, number two, I would have to edit it, which would have been a day or two delay. And number three, I want to I want to talk to you guys about what you want to know. So, hey, Nathan. What's up, coach? Hey, Michael. Hey, hey, Ann. Hey, Shanine. Hey, Annette. Uh, feel free to invite people to watch this uh, video. I'm, I'm going to push these buttons. I think that uh, online. Uh, but, you know, feel free to, to, to invite people. Feel free to ask questions while I'm doing this. I'm going to take about an hour, hopefully, uh, or less, um, and just try to give you guys some ideas. So for those who don't know me, I'll be quick. You know, most of you know me from Facebook, uh, but not all of you know me. You know, the beauty of Facebook is that you have people uh, that you can connect with over, you know, over several several years, several genres, several parts of your life, times of your life that you can connect with. So on my Facebook uh, friends list, I have people that I have known uh, literally. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to get the right angle for this thing, so I apologize. Uh, but I have people on my Facebook uh, friends list that I've known since I was in middle school all the way up to people that I know that I met recently. So it keeps me uh, at least partly accountable because anything I say about how I used to be or what I did, any bragging I do, uh, there are people on here who can, who can hold me to that. Uh, so that's good because it keeps me accountable. It makes me honest. It gives you guys a a better insight into into the truth about what I say. Uh, like Michael, for example, who's, who's joined. I've known Michael Boyle since high school. Uh, Ann Fraction uh, has been a part of my family since I was a baby. My mom, uh, my mom's godparents were her, were related to her. So again, and Yanith and Nathan and, and others who just joined know me more recently. So, but for those who don't know me in depthly, who just know me kind of, from a Facebook request. Um, my name is Bobby. They call me Coach Bobby in several settings. Um, I've been at this fitness exercise health thing for about 40, about 30 years, 30, 35 years. Uh, I tell people in my class, and it's the honest truth, I have not missed, a, a, I haven't missed more than three days working out in a row since my freshman year, my first day of practice in college in 1990. So it's been a very important part of my life. I met my wife at a gym. Uh, my kids have been doing exercise stuff since they were little. Um, it's integral in my life. So I've been at it for a long, long time. So when I talk about things, uh, fitness and exercise and health related, I speak with a passion that sometimes can be over the top uh, it's because it's, it's important to me. It's part of who I am. Uh, so for those who don't know me that in-depthly, hey, Nathan. I'm sorry. Hey, Norman. Hey, hey Ernesto. Hey, Jess. 
for those who don't know me and definitely, uh, again, my name is Bobby. They call me Coach Bobby. Uh, I've been at this thing for a long time. I'll be 45 in October. Uh, my background, uh, education-wise, is in finance, believe it or not, accounting and finance. I have a degree from, uh, from UC Davis, a bachelor in economics uh, that I used to, to get into accounting. Uh, I went back to Santa Clara University and got my MBA in finance. And I worked uh, in the corporate world uh, as a senior finance person for over a decade before getting back into fitness and, and health and trying to pursue my passion with the help, thank God, of my wife who supports me. Uh, but I've been at this you know, for a long time. I have two kids. One started high school this year. One started middle school. So that's a new uh, challenge emotionally <laughs> for me. Um, but I say all that to say that a lot of things that people go through, a lot of the uh, challenges people face in terms of scheduling and getting older and having obligations, I've gone through a lot of that. So I talk about you know, things in terms of being able to work around things in part because I do it in my life. You know, if I was 22 and was trying to explain to somebody that they can make it work, uh, you know, find time to work out, find ways to eat right. Uh, it's not as uh, it's not as compelling or convincing if, a, if I'm 22 and haven't experienced things. So I think being 45 uh, gives me some advantages in terms of being relatable to people, uh, being able to tell people what I've used, what I've done uh, in terms of strategies and how it's helped me and and hopefully it gives them some some help and some uh motivation and inspiration that they can do it too all right so what do I, what do i do and so again ask questions guys i think i can see them here um somebody asked a question so i can make sure this thing's working or say hi or something just comment um but the thing that i that i've learned i think over the over the years uh number one is that it has to be you know being healthy and being fit has to be part of what you want to do right what you want to do in terms of who you want to be it can't be something you it cannot be something that you want to do just for a cruise or just for a wedding uh, in order to be in shape in order to be healthy it has to be part of who you are Right, part of what you believe. We all have a a foundational belief system that we are governed by, that our lo our lives are governed by, and you know that might be that I will not lie, or I will not steal, or I will be faithful, or I will be a good father, or I will be whatever it is. The list can be long. I will be a good wife. I will be a good husband. I will I will do. I will be a good leader. I will, I don't. I won't curse. You know, all of us have some foundational uh, beliefs about what is right or wrong or what we want the world to see us as. And so if you want to be healthy as part of who you are and not just get to a point where you lost 10 pounds or 20 pounds for an event or for a cruise or for whatever, if you want it to be part of who you are, then you have to make it part of that foundational belief. It's really that simple. And so... I believe that I should be healthy. I believe that I should present to people around me uh, inspiration. I believe that being fit and looking a certain way is, is important to my brand, to the brand that is Bobby. And so because of that, exercising and eating in a way, and I, I don't use healthy because healthy has different connotations. I'll get into that. But I believe that eating... And hey, Amy, hey, Charles, hey, hey, JC, hey, Coach, hey, Jerrica, hey, Norman. Uh, I believe that because I, I think that way, that's part of who I am, right? That's part of, you know, who I am. So exercising and eating right isn't something that's overly challenging because this is who I am. No one, no one brags about feeding their kid every day if they want to be a good mother. No one brags about, you know, not going out and, and partying all the time. Uh, when they're a husband, because that's part of being a good husband. So if, if there are things you believe 
are important not only to to your belief system but also important to your brand then doing those things is not necessarily going to be challenging or difficult so first the first step to anybody who really wants to change who they are uh, health wise and fitness wise is they have to begin to believe that is who they should be and who they are right that's got to be part of your belief system and what i see more times than not is that people uh, do not view health and fitness that way they view health and fitness as a means to an end as something they're going to do in order to drop to a certain weight or get ready for a certain event as opposed to i'm doing it because it's the thing to do i'm doing it because as a human being as a animal in this in the in the animal kingdom i'm meant to be strong and vibrant and 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 live long and prosper right and so if you don't believe that if you don't if you don't if you're not governed by that then the challenges of being fit are are too great so the first step if you want to change permanently now now if you want to get ready just for a wedding or a cruise or you want to just drop a few pounds and and that's just what you want then there are a lot of ways to do that right there are a lot of ways to go out and and drop 20 pounds in in a month or two months or whatever it is temporarily um, but I am of the belief that you cannot change permanently unless you change your mindset permanently unless you tell yourself that this is this my th this way of being not just living this way of being is how I was meant to be, is how I want to be from this day forward, how I want to project the brand of who I am to the world. If you don't believe that, then it will never get easier. And it, it might never be possible, right? So the first step uh, that I've learned, and I kind of I got this by happenstance. You know, I played sports growing up. I played football. What's up, Kelvin? Somebody send me a message, please, so I kind of know that people can message me uh, and if you can't, I got to get this fixed. I want to be able to answer questions real time uh, to you guys. Uh, but the, let me see here. But I kind of got to this point almost by accident. So I do, I do sympathize with some people who didn't grow up playing sports, who didn't uh, grow up uh, with a reason to exercise. So I grew up playing football in high school. What's up, Jericho? Thank you. Thank you. You guys can comment. Please comment. Please ask, please ask questions. Otherwise, I'm going to talk your ears off about nonsense. Okay? Uh, hey, Pam. Hey, Jerrica. So we... So I, I got here by happenstance, right? And I got here almost by accident because I loved football. Hey, Matthew. I love football. I knew I had to be bigger and stronger and faster than I was naturally. Uh, and Kelvin can attest to this. We, we used to lift weights uh, in the late 80s together. Uh, and so that, that, was, that was a necessary evil to be able to play in the NFL, right, was to get bigger and stronger. So I didn't necessarily want to lift weights or want to eat better. Back then, eating better meant eating a lot, right? I was trying to gain weight, uh, which is why I always tell people that the frustrations they feel with trying to lose weight is not that much different than the frustration that many athletes felt or feel trying to gain weight, right? I went years and years and years trying to get bigger, right? Set my alarm at night to wake up, to drink protein shakes and to eat fried potatoes and to eat whatever was caloric to gain weight and, and get on the scale the next day and not gain a pound, maybe losing a pound. So that frustration is not much different than people trying to lose weight. Uh, but, the, but, but the point is, so I knew that I needed to continue to, to run and lift and eat in a way that was going to help me get toward my goal. And then when I got to college, you know, I did the same thing. And then after that, it kind of became part of my brand. You know, at some point, I did begin to develop muscles and began to enjoy being fit. So once I was done playing, that, that became part of my brand, right? So people saw me as being fit. So I kind of transitioned from that into uh, doing the health and fitness thing 
you know, some, in some ways just to maintain the brand. But then you begin to kind of be addicted to this feeling of, of, of getting through stuff, of, of battling exercise and battling challenges and coming out the back end, having won, that feeling becomes addictive. So, you, so at some point, uh, I crossed over from having a real reason to do it to just doing it because it was part of my brand and because the feeling of, of accomplishment, of being fit, especially when people around you are not like that, uh, that feeling becomes addictive and you kind of use that as the leverage to keep going. Uh, but I got it by accident. But, but the feeling that you have to have is the same regardless of how you got there. You have to make it part of who you are, like part of the brand that makes Pam or Cindy or, or Nikki or Jerrica, the brand that when people think about you, um, at some point they have to think about the, the efforts you try to make to be healthy, right? Matthew, you know, Matthew rides, right? Cindy goes to, you know, she, she does this and this and this, and she just celebrated a milestone birthday, but she goes to boot camp all the time, right? That becomes part of the narrative and the conversation when you're talking about these people. And so it's because they've made it an integral part of who they are. And that is the first step. If you don't do that, it will never be easy for you to be fit, I promise. Never, right? And, and you'll try things here and there. You'll do detoxes. You'll do these cleanses. You'll buy DVDs. You'll join programs. You'll buy supplements. You'll buy fat loss pills. You might see some success with that, but you will never, never... Uh, permanently be on track to be fit unless you adopt this philosophy that my foundational beliefs have to change, right? So that's what I did. That's what I do. My foundational belief is that Bobby Bluford is fit, should be fit. There's no reason he shouldn't be fit, whether he's 22 when I played football in college or 45, right? That foundational belief that I'm, I'm a warrior that I am a, a, a one of the strongest animals in the animal kingdom, that foundational belief hasn't changed, won't change, and 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 must be the starting point. All right. So, so that's kind of where it all starts is a belief system that that includes um, at the core, at the essence, at at the foundational level, a belief that you should be fit, and 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 really for no other reason. All right. So let's put that aside. And so the way I got here, again, was from sports, was from training. Uh, but like many of you, I went into the workplace. I worked for a long time in corporate America. And so I saw the challenges that, and I, you know, I have children now you know, who were young, who are, who are not young, young anymore, middle school, high school. But I went through the sleepless nights. And so all those challenges, I get it, make it hard to be fit, right? So... When I was younger, it was easier to it was easy to integrate into my schedule, um, workout and not so much you know nutrition because when you're young, it's not as important. Uh, but I definitely you know incorporated into my into my schedule. What's up, Kevin? Old, old college buddy. Hey, Jim. Uh, so I definitely in, integrated or or incorporated into my system into my schedule workout time. Back then, it was every day. You know, for several hours. Uh, always important. Always schedule me first. It's important to schedule you first. Uh, but then you. But then, as you get older, it becomes harder and challenging. And then, you know, after working in a corporate environment, sitting down behind a desk, not being as active, getting older, um, wanting to get bigger still. Back in the you know my twenties and thirties, uh, and so still eating whatever I wanted. You know. Uh, developing bad habits. I tell people all the time that my habits were as bad as anyone's who, who claims to have bad habits. I craved and ate stuff um, that would put some people's diets to shame, right? Or make them look great. So, you know, setting my alarm at night to get up and eat, you know, baking cookies before I went to bed so I'd have fresh cookies when I woke up to eat. All this initially was in, in efforts to get bigger. But then those, be, those become habits. And so when I decided about maybe eight, nine years ago that I didn't want to be big anymore. I didn't want to be huge. I didn't want to be 200 pounds anymore. Uh, and I'll post a picture of me uh, at Amari's 
my son's sixth birthday, I think it was. So about, so about five or six years ago, when I was about 195, right? Uh, where I was still trying to get bigger. And I hadn't really even thought about it. I've never felt out of shape, really. Uh, but now as I look back, compared to how lean I am now and the approach that I take now, you know, I almost am embarrassed that I had the audacity to take my shirt off back then. Um, I've, I've never been embarrassed. But I look back now and it's like, wow, I don't know how I did it. But the point was, I was, I was in a football player. I was still in football player mode. You know, I was in, I was in Gold's Gym, you know, testosterone-driven mode, trying to get big, trying to get strong. So I, was, I, wasn't, watching, I wasn't watching my diet, per se. Uh, always trained hard. Uh, but didn't watch what I ate very much. I always had the philosophy that I could just, you know, I, I train so I can eat what I want. And that's the same mantra many people say now. I train so I can eat what I want. And that's some, some partial truth to that, but that catches up to you. So at, some, at one point I was, you know, I went to my annual visit to my, to my doctor and I was 201 on the scale. Right, I was fully clothed, you know, shoes off, but had, you know, pants and a shirt on. Uh, but I was 201, and even though for much of my early adult life I wanted to be 200 for some reason, 195, 200 just looked good on a, in, a, in a sports program. Uh, when I got to 201, it didn't feel right, and so I began to investigate. I began to uh, try different things. Um, and this came at the same time that I had young children. So I couldn't be at the gym every day after work for two hours, right? So going back to what I told you, you know, I was working at the time in corporate America as a CFO and a VP of finance. So long hours, you know, I didn't, I didn't the, the job didn't stop until 5.30, 6 o'clock every day. And then I was going to the gym after that, uh, or I would go at lunchtime. To work out, but then that, that meant I, you know, to to show my dedication, I had to stay later at the job, or at least until the CEO left. Um, but in either in, in in either way, in either format um, scenario, I had I didn't get home until late, and so I had to find a way to work out less often, right? And then so you couple that with the fact that I was I had these habits. What's up, Michael? What's up, uh, Oki? It's a guy I uh, played ball with. We called him Oki. Just signed in. Um, but when you when when you when you couple those two um, changes in my life together, right? You have you have the one side of the equation where uh, all of a sudden there's pressure to stop working out so much, right? To stop working out as often as I had been doing, which was every day when I was younger, every single day. For several hours. I mean, I went a whole year without missing one day of working out. 370 something days. Without missing one day. Not a Christmas, not a birthday, nothing. So you're, so now I'm pressured to work out less because I have kids at home who are crying and need diapers changed and a wife who's been you know, home with kids all day uh, or at least part of the day. Or, and, and on the other side, I have a scenario now where the habits that I've developed over years of getting up and eating and trying to get bigger, all of a sudden, I didn't want to be big anymore. I wanted to get smaller uh, and get leaner. And now those two things are, 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 are coming to a head ahead, and I have to change almost everything that I thought about fitness, right? Work out less, uh, less often. Uh, eat differently, wasn't really sure what that meant at the time, do cardio, I didn't know what cardio was until I was in my late 20s, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get on a treadmill probably until my mid, mid to late 20s, so uh, I began to change everything about what I thought about fitness, right, and, and this, this again, still coming from the standpoint of somebody who was a member of the fitness club, not necessarily a coach of the fitness club, uh, so, you know, about, you know, the, the, the early 2000s, you know, to about 2010, I began to change this mindset, right? And when I turned, you know, probably 35 or so, I really began to, to, to shift my thought process into trying to learn better about 
um, being more effective and efficient in how I approach my fitness level. You know, not about doing things, you know, the best, you know, the hardest way or the toughest way or the most impressive way, but trying to be more efficient. So after, you know, years of study, what's up, Noy? What's up? Hi, Julie. Hey, Monique. After years of studying and learning and trying things, I believe now I kind of have, I don't believe it. I, I mean, I, I really believe it. It's all changes. So if anybody to say they know everything uh, is lying. So all I can say is after trying, after researching, after learning, after spending, again, you know, uh, three decades of doing this, um, of exercising and learning, um, I, I have what I believe is, is if not the, the, the formula, it's the strategy that needs to be done, right? The strategy that will get you on the path, the right path to being fit. And it's not easy, uh, but it is simple. It's very simple, actually. It's almost embarrass embarrassingly simple um, in, in the strategy. And again, it's not necessarily easy to do or employ, uh, but I'm hopeful that by doing these talks, I'm gonna try to do, I'll try to do them regularly, uh, that you guys can understand and appreciate the simplicity into being being fit. And then hopefully at some point, uh, you can go back to the very first step I talked about where you decide, okay, now that I know there's a strategy that I can use that's simple, all I have to do is do the first step, which is commit to being that way, right? So, because I can give you, you know, one of the things I say to people is I can give you the best nicotine patch there is in the world, but if you don't believe smoking is bad for you, then it won't matter, right? So you have to believe, number one, that, that you want to, should, should, and need to be different, and then I can give you the simplest strategy there is to do that, all right? So, so what have I learned? 12:38. I'm gonna try to try to give you some high-level stuff today, right? High-level points, uh, and then after that we can do follow-ups. Again, ask questions as, as we go, uh, but we, we can do maybe a follow-up session or follow-up sessions. Maybe every Tuesday we'll do a lunch break with Bobby or whatever. Uh, but at at a high level, at a high level, losing weight. Hey, Lynn. Losing, losing fat, right? So first of all, let's, let's approach this the right way. We're not trying to lose weight. I know, we, I know we are. I know we are. But losing weight is not what we're, what we're ultimately trying to do. We're trying to lose fat, right? We're trying to change our body composition to be more lean, right? To have more muscle tone, not necessarily muscles, muscles, but to have more lean muscle mass and less fat, right? So we're trying to lose fat, not necessarily lose weight, right? Which is why sometimes people will join a program, join a gym, and they will actually either stay at the same weight or even gain weight, but they'll notice that their clothes are smaller, right? Because their body composition is different. Lean muscle is, you know, an equal... Uh, weight of lean muscle is much, much, much smaller than the equal weight in fat. You've seen the pictures on, in, on Pinterest or Instagram. It's like three times the size. Fat, a fat bundle is much larger than the same weight in lean muscle. So we're trying to lose fat, right? We don't care what the number on the weight says. We care about how we look in our clothes and how we look naked, right? Let's be honest. So when we wake up and take a shower, we're not mad at the number. We're mad at how we look in the mirror. We're being honest. So the goal is to change our body's composition. Simple as that. We're trying to make our body percent of lean muscle higher, percent of body fat lower. Okay? So we got to get past this notion that we're just trying to, to lose weight. Right? And we all buy into it. We all lose the battle. Hey, Peter. Hey, Ritika. Ritika. Hey, Lynn. So we all we all lose this battle because we we want to lose weight, right? And we get we get we get obsessed with the scale. And everyone around us in the fitness industry and the health industry knows this. So we are we are at the mercy of all these companies who study us, who understand us, and know that we want to see the number on the scale change. Period. 
almost at all costs, right? So they understand, and I'll get into this really quickly, they understand that most people, especially in America, most people live daily with their glucose, which is blood sugar, and glycogen, which is stored blood sugar or stored glucose. Most people live with those levels very, 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 very high, if not full, right? Which is why we store fat, and I'll get into that in a second, right? So most health industries, most supplements, most workout programs are geared to help people, to make people deplete these glycogen and glucose stores quickly, right? Which is why they tell you, do this workout. Hey, Pam. Hey, Peter. Do this workout for 30 days. This high-intensity P90X or, or Insanity video. Do it for 30 days every day and eat this low-calorie, low-carb diet. Because they know that if you deplete your glucose and glycogen stores, that you'll lose weight. It's very simple, right? Glucose stores uh, take up space, take up weight. Glucose and glycogen units attached to water. So normally when you do these programs, you lose glucose storage or glucose stored glycogen and you lose water. So you're going to lose weight. You almost cannot lose weight. You almost can't not lose weight. Is that right? Right, you almost have to lose weight. So they know it. They know you're going to lose weight. If you do it right, how they tell you to, they're going to do a before picture. They're going to do an after picture. They're going to promote you or whoever on the website, and they're going to win. You're going to buy whatever it is. The problem is with that, guys, is that there's no real change in body composition. Right? It's, it's, it's the equivalent. What's up? What's up, uh, Poppy? It's the equivalent of me giving you a raincoat with two two pound bags in it and saying, okay, put this jacket on and weigh yourself. Okay. And you weigh yourself. And when you get off, I say, you know what? Take the coat off and weigh yourself again. What do you weigh? And you lose four pounds and you're ecstatic, right? Which is, which is dumb, but you're ecstatic, right? Because you've lost weight, right? You lost weight. You're happy about it. Oh, I lost weight. I'm going to go on Facebook down two pounds, you know, hashtag goals, hashtag all this bullshit that people post. No, you lost water and you lost stored glycogen. The underlying body composition has not changed at all. At all, right? So what happens is you can only store so much. So you're on this program for a week or two weeks or 30 days. Hey, Ricky, and you lose 10 pounds or 8 pounds, whatever it is, right? Most, if not all of that weight loss was stored glycogen, What's up, Jason? Store glycogen and glucose and the attached water that attaches to glycogen and glucose. So you've lost no fat, probably, maybe a little bit, but probably not much, right? If you're lucky, you didn't lose any muscle, but many programs, because you're going so low in, in your um, calorie intake, right, and you're going so high in your calorie output, Right, they have you doing a, a workout every day, or you're seeing results. Now you're gonna go spin or run every day, and you're doing all this output, right? Creating an energy deficit, which can be good, but because you're doing all this stuff, you might lose muscle mass, right? So if you're lucky, you didn't lose muscle mass, but at the very least, you've only lost glycogen stores and water, right? So that's why that that analogy of me giving you a raincoat it is is apropos makes sense because it's the same thing we're doing we're excited about a number that means almost nothing to us now it means something in terms of getting ready to burn fat and i'll get into that in a second but in terms of the number itself that you lost three pounds or whatever it means nothing i can lose five pounds in a weekend on a, on a, on a scale like literally i can lose five pounds now guys can lose more weight right and girls get mad i mean it's not fair my husband can, can go out and have fun and he'll come back and he'll do cardio for a week and he'll watch, his, watch what he eats and he'll lose five pounds. It's not fair. It is fair. He has muscle. That's why it's fair. He has muscle so he stores more glycogen. So when he depletes the glycogen by working hard, by pushing weights around, he loses more glycogen and the attached water. So it is fair. Right? You don't want to build muscle to store glycogen so don't get mad when your husband who has muscle Right? He loses muscle glycogen, right? Loses the water attached to that and can lose five pounds on the scale. 
right? I can literally do, you know, go from Sunday to Friday and lose five pounds. Do I get ecstatic? No, because I know what, what, what it is, right? So the first step after we, after we realize that it has to be a mindset, that we have to want to be different and not just lose weight for whatever reason, right? Once we decide that it's part of our makeup, part of our brand, part of our belief system, being healthy, being strong, being fit, once we do that, then we have to go past that and start beginning to understand what the true goal is. And the true goal is to lose body fat, to change our body's composition, not let's lose weight, right? Which is why I don't really buy into these challenges. People say, Bobby, you'll make more money. Maybe I would. You'll make more money if you do a 45-day challenge and get people to weigh in and do all this stuff they do on Biggest Loser. I could do that probably and make you eat a 1,000 calories, right, and come to the, my boot camp and check in every day. But number one, you wouldn't have owned it. I want you to own it first, the first step. Number two, we're focused on the wrong thing, and that's the number on the scale, the total pounds lost, right? I can just say, you know what, weigh in, I'm going to give you a jacket, and then come back in 10 days, and we'll weigh in without the jacket. And then hopefully you've lost weight. That's the same thing, right? It's the same, it's the same concept. So we're trying to get past that, right? We're trying to get past that. So, so what do we do? What do we do? What's up, Big Ray? What do we do? So... The real key, and, and get a pen and write this down, right? And, and what I'll do is I'll try to find this spot on the video and, and mark it in the notes. But the key, the real key to changing your body composition, to losing body fat, right? Not weight. Weight will come as a byproduct, I promise. But the key to losing body fat, which is what we want, is glycogen and glucose blood sugar management. That's the key, right? The key to body fat transform body fat loss and body transformation, body composition change, the key is managing your body's blood sugar, your body storage and usage of glycogen, right? And that's really where all these ketogenic diets come from, these low carb diets come from. Uh, all this stuff comes from that, that concept without telling you, right? And I'm telling you the key, and I learned this recently, and it's really been um, life-changing for me, to be honest, right? And, and using ketone supplements helps. I'll get into that. But even without that, just the knowledge of how the body works, how the body uses energy, how the body, how and when the body stores fat has been the key to me probably being as, as fit looking. Now, you know, there's, there's different definitions of, of fit, but looks is part of it. How do you look? How, are you lean? Are you muscular? Do you have abs? As far as fit looking, I, I'm as fit looking as I've ever been. Even when I played cornerback in college, in my 20s, and I trained every day. I'm 45 this year, and I'm as fit-looking as I ever have been. And it's in large part because I understand this, this blood sugar management, and I'll call it a rule because it's what it is. It's a rule, right? So, hey, Cleo, here it is. So write this down. Again, the, the whole key to body composition change, right, is to manage your body's levels of glucose. So if you imagine your body has two tanks, right? Two energy fuel tanks, like you're a hybrid vehicle, right? Your body is a hybrid vehicle. And you have gas, which is like carbs. Hey, Donna, you have gas, which is like carbs or glucose. Carbs and glucose is the same thing. Carbs get converted into glucose units when we eat them. No matter what it is, it could be a donut or it could be brown rice. Now, the, the, the impact and, and severity of our spikes in insulin and so forth are different. But in terms of what it breaks down to, it's the same. Our body breaks down carbs into glucose. So we have a glucose tank and we have a ketone or fat converted tank. We all do. Everyone does. right? We have two sources from which from which to draw energy, to use, to do everything, to run our bodies, to breathe, to uh, replace skin, 
uh, to run a marathon, to lift 80 pound dumbbells, to do a box jump, to clean the floor. We require energy for all these things and it comes from one of two places, right? It comes from glucose, right? Our glycogen storage or it comes from our ketone storage, okay? So what does that mean? So most of us have, oh, well, first of all, our bodies would prefer to use glycogen or glu glucose for energy. Our bodies, it's easy. Our bodies would prefer you give it sugar that it can use immediately and easily, right? Our bodies and brains, if you Google this, you'll, con you'll, you'll confirm it. Our body and brains run more efficiently on ketones, converted fat, right? Again, don't take my word for it. Google it, right? Our bodies would prefer to use the easy source of energy, glycogen or glucose, right? This is one thing. Our body and brain run more effectively on ketones, right? Which is why people who are on a ketogenic diet, right, even though it sucks getting into that state of ketosis, once they're there, they'll tell you they have energy, that's crazy, that's sustainable, they think clearly, they don't have any mood swings. Um, there's several benefits to that once you get there because our bodies run more effectively and efficiently on ketones. The problem is most of us never, ever, ever use ketones, right? Now, from the standpoint of body composition change, again, back to the two tanks. We have glucose or glycogen tank, and we have a ketone tank. Our body prefers to use glycogen. So if we have gas in this tank, we never even look at this tank, right? The ketone tank. So for most people, they never get to a situation in their body because of the abundance of carbohydrate, of glucose we eat, this tank is never empty. And our body will not use the ketone tank or even look at it until the glycogen tank, the glucose storage, is, is empty. Right? So not until our body has used up all of its glycogen will it begin to convert or oxidize fat into energy. And that's ketone bodies. So our body, we don't burn fat. We oxidize and convert fat into energy known as ketone bodies. So our body has to do that. It has to do some work, but it does it if it has to. But it won't do any of that until the body is free and clear of all stored glucose. So, and then the reverse is true, right? So when we have a situation where our glycogen tank is full, our body has to store that somewhere as fat. So let's do that part first, because that's the state most people, especially in America, live in. So our body uses energy, again, either from glucose or ketones. For most of us, it uses glycogen, glucose, glucose, right? Glucose in our bloodstream, or it converts stored glucose from our liver or our muscle glycogen into glucose, which it then uses. So again, because most of us have an ample supply of glucose to use for energy, our bodies almost never tap into the ketones. So let's take a, 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 a normal person in today's society, right? Where you wake up, you have a bagel or cereal or toast uh, or donut. Then you go to lunch, you have rice, you have pasta, you have a sandwich, uh, you have dinner, you might have some uh, noodles, more rice, bread, potatoes, whatever. So our, our lives are full of carbohydrates. And so this glucose tank is always full for people. And there's only so much the body can use and store. So if you use, I love this analogy, if you use the analogy of a kitchen, and I actually hid my kitchen because my wife would get mad if, it's, if it doesn't look good enough. But... If you imagine a kitchen, okay, so the countertop, when you bring stuff in, you bring all this crap in from the store, the countertop is our bloodstream. So when you eat bread or you eat rice, that goes into our bloodstream. Our body will try to use what it can from the bloodstream for energy. So your body will convert 
the rice or the bread or whatever into, into glucose units, in your bloodstream, your body will hopefully use a good portion of that. Which is why if you're running or you're training or doing something very, very active, endurance athletes are a great example. They can eat Skittles while they're training or a Snickers bar because your body's going to immediately use that glucose that you gave it in the bloodstream, right? So the countertop is, is the bloodstream. So everything we take in immediately goes there first, okay? Now... Either because it's full or because you gave it too much at one time and your body had to secrete insulin, the overflow of that glucose goes into storage. So we'll imagine that being the cabinets in our kitchen, right? So the liver and the muscle muscles are the storage areas for stored glycogen. So glucose will be stored in our liver or our muscles as muscle glycogen. All right, so which is why guys who are big and strong and can store more glycogen can lose more weight more quickly because once you get rid of the storage, if you have more storage, you get rid of more weight, right? So the countertop is the bloodstream, the cabinets are the liver and muscles. So once all that is full, there's nowhere else to put the next item you ingest into your body. So the next thing you eat, right, if it can't be stored on the countertop, because the bloodstream is full, if it can't be stored in the cabinets, because the muscle and, and, and I'm sorry, the, the muscle and liver glycogen is full, your body has no other uh, thing to do than to, than to shuttle that extra energy for long-term storage, which is fat, right? So our bodies are very adept at storing fat going back to ancestor, our ancestors and primal times when our ancestors had to store fat because there's long bouts of famine. What's up, Omar? So our bodies, you know, once they're full in the bloodstream, once they're full in the liver and muscles, will almost immediately begin to store fat. And so that's what most people live in. That's the state most of us live in. Because you don't exercise often enough or at all, right? You, you very seldom deplete that glycogen store. Now we use energy 24-7, right? So the gas tank in your in your car, in your body, is always being used up, right? The rate at which you use it is determined by a lot of things. How, how lean you are, which is why being lean long-term wise helps you because it's the equivalent of having a Hummer or a big truck versus a Prius, right? If you're strong and have muscle, your body requires more energy every day. So you naturally are gonna, gonna burn that glycogen and glucose levels at a faster rate, right? And then if you exercise or do things in your daily life that require energy, walking the dog or, or cleaning or taking the stairs at work, those things help in the rate at which you diminish the glycogen stores. But at the end of the day, you're still not depleting it very much if you don't actively work out. So most people, because they don't exercise regularly, don't deplete glycogen at a fast enough rate to make a dent in anything. So they're almost always at three quarters to almost full with the glycogen stores, with their, with their bloodstream stores and their muscle and liver stores of glycogen, which means that very often for these people, for these people, that sounds bad, very often for many of us, the next thing we eat, especially if it's a binge, if it's a party, if it's a weekend somewhere, the next things we eat, because there's nowhere to put it, it has to go off the storage. Right? I call it fat you store. It's a company called Fat You Store. Because once it's full, once your bloodstream is full, once your liver and muscles are full, your body has to call Fat You Store to come get this other crap and put it away. Right, So that's why people are in this dilemma where they look back after a year and they've gained 5 pounds and they've, or they've gained 10 pounds or they've gained whatever it is. They've gained weight because they've, they've lived most of their lives of the year, of the month, of the week at a level that's high on this glycogen storage unit, this tank that has glycogen. And so once it goes over, once it spills over, it has to be stored somewhere. And people say, oh, you don't have fun, Bobby. I have fun. I just understand how it works, 
how our bodies work. If you go over, which is glycogen storage, it has to be stored as fat. Where's this going to go? Right? So that's the key is, is, is if you don't want to get fat or or bigger, or gain, we all have fat, so we're all going to get fatter or less fat. I'm not saying that to be mean, I have fat, so if I don't want to get fatter, gain fat, then I have to make sure that my glycogen levels are never full, period, right? And so that means either eating less carbs and or depleting it more by exercise, by, by, by making better life decisions as to walking and, and, and standing more as opposed to sitting all day, right? So we're trying to make sure that we don't ever get this glycogen stores to go over and store fat, right? Because, again, once it's full, the next thing we eat is stored as fat, okay? So how do we lose fat? That's the key, right? How do we lose fat? So the key to losing fat is the inverse of that. We have to get this glycogen tank, right, this, this, this fuel tank to go empty, right, to go, ooh, what's up, cousin, to go empty. We have to get our glycogen levels, which is why it says ketones are better than glucose. We have to get our, our sugar tanks, our glycogen tanks to empty as often and for as long a period of times as possible. It's that simple, right? And so how do we do that? We do that by eating less carbs, right, at the right times, and by helping that process by working out and exercising in the right way. And by the right way, I mean in a way that, deplete, that depletes glycogen quickly, right? And I'll get into that more a little bit later or maybe our next time we talk because it's a lot, I know, but it's about making your body use up glycogen, which is why... Running isn't the best thing for it. People say, oh, you hate running, Bobby. I don't hate running. I'm, I'm not pro. I'm not anti-running. I'm pro-efficiency. And so I'm trying to get my glycogen levels low as possible, as quickly as possible. And running, unless you're sprinting, doesn't do that. Right? You know, getting on a, a stationary bike and just going at steady speed doesn't do that. You might sweat a little bit, but, that, but sweat doesn't, doesn't necessarily equate to power output or glycogen depletion. And so we're trying to get this tank in order to lose fat, right? We're trying to get this tank to be empty, right? As often and for as long as possible, right? Because once it's empty, what happens? Once the glycogen tank is empty, our body must convert into the other tank, like a, like a hybrid vehicle. Now we have to burn ketones, right? If our body has ketones, which it probably won't, then it uses those. If it doesn't, it begins almost immediate conversion of oxidized fat into energy, also known as ketones. So we want to give our body time, regular, in, regular intervals, regular times where it's depleted of glycogen and is forced to begin to, con to convert fat into energy. And that's what, you know, Atkins diets, low-carb diets, ketogenic diets, that's for the most part what they're based on, all right? The problem is a lot of times people go low-carb or low-calorie, but two things happen. Number one, they don't have enough energy or they might just be avoiding exercise altogether to have great workouts. Hey, Raphael. Number two, they are not getting low enough in their carb intake. So they're low and their calories are low, and, they, and they've, lost some, they've lost some weight because they've used up some of their glycogen stores, so they feel good. But it's not low enough to start converting fat, right? Because our bodies almost need for this to be empty, the glycogen tank to be empty before it uses fat. So, yeah, I'm going low carb. All I have is, you know, brown rice and, and whole, wheat, whole grain bread. And so my calories are down. Yes, you will lose some stored glycogen. Uh, but unless your body begins to use up more and more of that glycogen on its own and get you to zero, a zero balance, and converts fat, the likelihood is that you're not converting fat into energy. Right? So you're not really changing. Again, back to, the, back to my analogy, you're not really ever changing 
your body's composition where you're losing fat. So all the weight you've lost, all the changes that you see on the scale are at some levels artificial or superficial or just window dressing because you haven't changed, you haven't, you haven't gained muscle probably because, you're, because your energy levels are low, right? And if you understood about training and about having energy to train, you would understand that you do need some carbs. So if you're going too low in carbs and not doing, uh, doing it the right way, you probably aren't doing the muscle building activities either. So if you didn't gain lean muscle and you didn't lose fat, you didn't change anything on your body composition at all. You lost some weight, but that's water and probably stored glycogen. That's it. And then you're going to get frustrated because eventually those storage is going to be empty, right? And, and, you, and you will stall. You know, I'm, I'm stagnant, Bobby. I'm, I'm frustrated because I lost eight pounds quickly, but now I'm kind of leveled off. Yeah, you leveled off because all the storage is gone, right? All the stored glycogen is gone. Now what? Right? Because you're not going low enough or fasting or getting in this, these long states where your body's forced to convert energy from fat, right? You don't do that often enough, if at all, you never change the fat makeup of your body, then you won't continue this, this journey and you'll get frustrated. So it's important to understand, again, there's two tanks, glycogen and ketones or fat, fat converted into energy. We have to learn, number one, to not get fatter we can't let this tank get full, right? So if you're going to go out for a weekend and have fun, that's fine. I get it. Either don't eat in the morning or train in the morning, right? Because you have to imagine, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to Tahoe or I'm going to, like my cousins are in Chicago, if I'm going away somewhere uh, and it's a, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole weekend, Right? I can't leave Friday, eat what I want driving up, eat what I want when I get there, never exercise, and expect to not gain fat. Right? It might be a little bit of fat, you know, whatever, a couple ounces. But over time, if you always do, do that, if every weekend you go into it and have fun, enjoy yourself the whole weekend, never exercising, and you're always at this level where you're kind of full anyway, and you go over in your glycogen tank every weekend then you're going to gain fat. And at the end of a year, you're going to look at yourself and say, wow, how did, how did that happen? Well, it happened because you, you let your, your tank be full all the time, right? So if you, if you don't want to get fatter, that's the first step. Stop the bleeding. Then stop letting your tank be full all the time, right? Eat less carbs, exercise some, and be cognizant and mindful of this imaginary tank that you're watching inside your body that is going up or down. Based on what you eat, how you exercise. What you eat, how you exercise. And try to keep that low. And the exact number is not important, but just try to keep that, that level low. Okay? And then the next step is changing the body. Right? So we're trying to make this tank go to empty. So yes, keeping it in the middle is fine. You won't get fatter that way at all. And you might lose some weight initially because you, you'll lose glycogen storage and you lose water. But, and that's good for now. But if we're trying to, to get better, to look better, to feel better, to be stronger, to be leaner, then we have to begin to empty this out regularly. Right? Get the glycogen stored out. Work, work out. Eat less. Go times of, you know, several hours throughout the week where you have no carbohydrates. Right? Or no food, period. Right? And I'll get into detail it may probably in another session because it's already been an hour uh, on how I do that. But you have to do that. You get, you get your body to understand uh, and un that it has to convert fat because because the, the fuel that it would normally use in glucose is gone. So now it's forced to use energy from fat. So we have to do that. We have to get the glycogen tank empty and force our body to convert fat. Right? And that's the key. That is the it's as simple as that, right? So for me, what I do, and I learned this, it's, it's hard. It's hard for a guy who grew up lifting weights, heavy, um, trying to be strong, trying to be big, um, having a um, 
brand of somebody who trains hard and have that be the front, the front of it, right? You know, training and, and, and eating are both important, but, and everyone has at the front what they do best or what they want to be known for. And I was always like, training was who I was, and it still is who I am, but training was at the forefront and then eating, whatever. Um, to understanding now that I don't even need to train as hard as I used to. And in fact, in some ways, it's detrimental to train as hard as I used to. So I don't train as hard, which is hard for me to do, and I eat what I want to eat still, but I just know when to eat it. So for me, what I do, and, I, and I'll get into the specifics in the next session, but basically I, I do two things that I believe are foundational to my success. Number one, I, I schedule my trainings. Like I line up in the week when I'm going to train. And that does, uh, that, that does a few things. Number one, it makes me accountable to myself. I schedule it. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in between my morning and, and afternoon class is my time to train. So Monday at 10.30, Wednesday at 10.30, Friday at 10.30, I have appointments with myself to work out. So that's step one. And, then, and Saturdays, I occasionally, well, I don't occasionally, I jump in with my class, but I don't really count that as a workout because I talk a lot, I walk around. Uh, so I really get three workouts and a half every week. Lining it up is important because I then overlap that with how I'm gonna eat and fast and when it's okay to have my carbs, right? So I'm not anti-carbs, I'm not ketogenic in, in necessarily 24 seven in how I eat. But what I do is I make sure that if I eat carbohydrates and put glucose into my body, that it's going to be used, right, immediately, either either before a workout, during a workout, or after a workout to recover and or when my body's in a high burning state, right, a state of high calorie burning in order to recuperate and repair muscles. So we train, I train, I try to teach my classes to train with that objective in mind to make sure that we, we are able to, to build muscle, of course, um, and, but also train in a way that makes the calorie burning window big enough or bigger than it would be. So you're burning uh, a heightened amount of calories for a longer period of time. And then we're trying to get rid of all the glucose so that we have just enough to get rid of the work, get through the workout and recover from the workout but then have it be depleted so that going into the next day we can burn fat, right? So that's what I do. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Bavani. So that's what I do. I, 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 I schedule my workouts, right? And I'm committed to that, guys. If you, can't, if you can't commit to yourself, then you're not ready, right? If you're not ready, I would say if you either, either, either you're dating your body or you're going to marry it. Either you're dating your health or you're going to marry it. If you're dating it, fine. Then you keep doing what you do. You know, keep pretending that, that I'm going to do 30 days here, 30 days, because you, you, you love the beginning stages of the relationship. You love buying the Groupon. You love buying the new shoes. You love whatever it is. You love going on Pinterest and, and, and putting hashtag goals on Instagram. You know, you love the dating part. You, know, you love the initial part. But in order to, to be successful, you have to marry your fitness. You have to marry your health and your body, right? It's that simple. So... When you're ready to do that, when you're ready to marry it, right, then you can move forward. So that's the first step. Commit to yourself. Hey, Deepika, commit to yourself. So I commit to training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, period, right? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1030 is, is, is a staff appointment with me, period. And so for you, it might be, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6. It might be after work. It might be 10 minutes. It might be an hour. But you have to make it, you have to be serious enough to commit to yourself, right? So once I do that, then I know, hey, John, then I know when my body can use carbs, right? So I know that I can have carbs Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, right? And in the very beginning of this process, I chose those days to have the things that I wanted to have, the things I craved. But now I don't crave them anymore, right? Uh, but I still use the same schedule. So now if I do want to have some carbs, I still can, but I don't have to, right? But people who say I want to have carbs, then 
you have to schedule your training first and then overlap that with your eating and your fasting, right? So what I do is, again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I train. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if I want to have carbs, I have on those days, hopefully as close to the training window as I can, right? And then the off days, I call them burn days, but the build day where we build muscle and then burn days where we burn fat, right? So going back to the, the scenario of the two tanks, right? On my training days, I might put a little bit of glucose in the tank to use up to get a good workout, right? To get a good workout, but make sure only enough to, to, to get rid of so the off day, my burn day, it empties out and my body's forced to convert fat into energy, right? So I'm doing both ends of the body composition change, right? I'm building lean muscle, right, by using some glycogen sometimes, but I'm also have opportunities throughout the week where I'm burning fat, right? So, so that's what I do. I basically, I align my week. I'm dedicated to doing it the right way. Uh, I'm dedicated to, to committing to myself. Three hours a week, guys, is not that hard of a commitment to work out, right? Three hours a week? Are you kidding me? But, but then, and, and even with that, you can still have things you want to have. I can't see myself not having rice. You know, I, I can't see myself not having pasta or bread. I get it. I, again, no one had worse habits than I had growing up. Uh, but then but you initially have to have to have to move those things into windows that they're least damaging. Right. And, and, for, and if you're training, those are the days you can have those things. And then the off days you can you cannot eat. You can fast. Right. So. So step one for me is, is scheduling your exercise, right? Because you have to exercise either way, you know, and I'll get into that in the next session. But you have to exercise for health reasons. Even without the benefit of looking better, we need a healthy heart, which you can't do by eating right. We need healthy bones and muscles, which you can't do by eating right. So exercise is integral anyway. So I, I line that up first. I, I make a commitment to myself there First, then I overlap that with, okay, now we have that. Now I, I have opportunities during the week where I will build muscle to make the long-term prognosis of my success greater because now my body will burn more calories every day just from walking around being more, being more lean, which means my body depletes glycogen faster, which gets me closer to fat burning faster. Uh, so I do that first, overlap my eating. Now I know, you know, on my days off, I can let my body go down to zero in the glycogen tank and then give my body time where I'm not giving it any more, for sure, carbohydrates, but in many cases, nutrients, right? So it can, it can begin to convert fat into energy. Okay. Now I'll get into this more because I, I didn't make, I didn't mean for this to be a selling video about my boot camp or about uh, Keto OS, the supplement I take for ketones. But very important to how I'm, I'm, I was able initially to get through those days where I was not taking in glycogen. Very, very important for that success was the use of Keto OS or exogenous ketones, right? So I do, I do it every day, but the days between workouts when I'm trying to reduce, eliminate my carbohydrate intake. On those days, it was very important to have something that was going to give my body fuel, right, in the way of something. Again, your body will use either glycogen or ketones. And it really doesn't, really, it really doesn't matter in terms of what I mean, it matters. Uh, but it can use either or, right? So most people, again, because their glycogen levels are full, their body will use glycogen. And almost never create ketones. Okay, so in order for our bodies to produce its own ketones or energy from fat, we have to empty out this bucket, right? The problem is that process can be tiring. It can be hard. It can be long, right? Anywhere from you know a, a two days to five days of low, low, low carbohydrate intake before our body regularly converts fat into energy, which is why you hear about people who get tired 
and lethargic and grumpy when they have no 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 carbs because your body has no blood sugar and no ketones yet. So in the very beginning, it was very important. Now I use it uh, just to, to make the process smooth. But in the very beginning, it was very important to have some fuel in my body when I was converting from being a sugar burner, glycogen burner, to being a fat burner, right? Burning fat for energy. Because when I was using, when my tank was full all the time, like yours is, my body was, was, was used to using glycogen for energy. And so when I began to deplete it regularly, there was a period, but there wasn't a period, I, I didn't try it the hard way, but there would have been a period of time when I had an empty tank of glycogen and an empty tank, empty tank of ketones. So your body goes through this, this, this period where it has nothing. And if you're lucky, it won't convert uh, muscle, but oftentimes it does into energy or at least amino acids uh, from broken down protein, which you don't want to do. So the ketone supplement gives your body a bridge, right? And allows you to go through this process. Again, you have to first commit to, commit to wanting to be better, commit, commit to having health and fitness be a part of who you are, not just what you want to do for 30 days. Once you do that, commit to yourself a regular exercise schedule. Again, because there's things that, that exercise will give you that eating right won't anyway. So you have to do that anyway. So And it, it's going to help you with the, the, the depletion of glycogen process and then get to the real meat of what you want to do, the fat burning process. So commit to it. Outline a schedule that you will exercise, however small it has to be in the beginning. But make sure you do it. And then intermittently between those, schedule yourself to Fast longer, so your body gets rid of the glucose faster, right? Or at least at some point, and then be able to get to a point where your body can burn fat. And the ketone supplement can help you do that because, again, there's a period of time before your body produces the ketones after it's depleted the glycogen. There's a period of time, hey Sabrina, hey John, where your body has no fuel. And you're walking around, you're lethargic and you're tired. And the first donut you see, your body is trying to survive, so it makes you eat it, right? So it's important to make sure that we don't allow our bodies to do that. So we can use a ketone supplement to help us, all right? So that's my strategy, guys. You know, I hope I didn't talk too much. It's an hour and a half almost. Um, but the key, again, a quick summary, the key to losing fat not weight, right? We can lose weight easily, right? But, but losing weight that has no, no attached change to our body composition is useless. So the key to losing fat is managing our blood glucose and stored glucose levels, right? The two tanks, glycogen and ketones. So to not get fat, we need to make sure we never allow our glucose to be full, right? To lose weight, we have to regularly and for long periods of time get our glucose tank empty, right? And that's helped, right, obviously, by exercise, right, by intense exercise that gets rid of things quickly, gets rid of glucose quickly, makes your body convert glucose into energy quickly, and by, by reducing the nutrients that come into your body, the carbs specifically, right? So that our body is getting rid of glucose and not adding any more to it, right? So, again, that presents a problem sometimes because once that's gone, if there's no ketone energy available, your body has nothing to, to work from. So you begin to get lethargic, headaches, tired, grumpy, lose muscle, lose amino acids. So to help that process, having a ketone supplement, which puts some ketones into this tank directly and gives your body an immediate fuel source that can be helpful. All right, so uh, submit questions. I'll post this uh, video. Submit questions, uh, and then I'll do a follow-up video. Maybe we'll do it every Tuesday, like lunch break Tuesdays with Coach Bobby. Um, and then we'll do a follow-up uh, video where I'll answer your questions, and then I can go into 
more details about how to work out correctly, more details about uh, what the ketone drink does for you, what ketones do for you, uh, and so forth. So, sorry I was so long today, guys. I talk a lot. Um, but enjoy your day. If you have any questions about this video or for the next one, uh, please post them or direct message me. Uh, but yeah, just keep at it, guys. Keep at it. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Uh, love yourself. Right? Love your body. What's up, Michael? One of my old college guys. See, I'm telling you, it goes. My friends go back 30 years on Facebook, so no one can tell me I'm I'm saying something that's not true. Uh, but yeah, so just you know, love yourself enough to commit to being better, to feeling better, to looking better. You only got one life, guys. You only got one chance to do this right. You only have one chance to leave an impression on the world. Um, and one of the reasons I talk about, you know, one to be, be in shape is not necessarily to have big arms and nice chest and big legs or nice legs, nice butt. But we address the world with how we feel. And so if, if the first thing we see in the mirror in the morning is something we don't like, it's hard to be a good mom or a good dad or a good worker or a good teacher, right? So at the very least, we're trying to present to the world the best version of ourselves. And that starts with how we feel, which starts oftentimes with how we look. So until next time, guys, I love you guys. Uh, my mantra is better than yesterday, BTY. I live by that. Uh, I always say that when I sign off. So until next time, uh, leave questions here if you have any. Uh, but we'll talk soon, guys. Love you. BTY. Take care.